If you've spent any real time inside a Rivian over the last year or so, you already know this isn't just a story about bug fixes or prettier menus. What's happened to Rivian's software through 2025 feels more like a quiet transformation, the kind you don't fully notice until one day you realize the vehicle you're driving doesn't behave, think, or respond the way it used to. The car I took delivery of in mid-2025 honestly feels like a different machine than the one I'm driving today. And that difference isn't sheet metal or motors, it's software. And after everything that was revealed recently about where Rivian is headed next, it's clear that 2026 isn't just about refining what already exists, it's about laying down a foundation that could fundamentally change how these vehicles operate and what owners expect from them. When I first started driving my Rivian last year, the software experience was fine, but it wasn't special. The interface did the job, but it often felt a step behind my inputs. Switching between climate controls, navigation, charging screens, or vehicle settings sometimes came with noticeable lag, the kind of pause that makes you wonder if you actually tapped the right button. Those small moments add up, especially in a vehicle that positions itself as tech forward. Over time, though, something shifted. Update after update throughout 2025 slowly smoothed out those rough edges, and by the time later releases rolled out, especially toward the end of the year, the system started to feel genuinely refined. Touch inputs registered almost instantly, animations flowed more naturally, and daily interactions stopped feeling like you were waiting on the car to catch up to you it finally began to feel like a modern, confident operating system, rather than a work in progress. Navigation and routing followed a similar path. Early on, route calculations could feel overly optimistic, and recalculations weren't always quick enough when conditions changed. Estimated arrival times sometimes felt more hopeful than realistic, which can be stressful when you're the type of driver who's comfortable rolling in with very little battery left. As updates rolled out, routing logic became noticeably smarter. The system started reacting faster to changes, recalculating routes more efficiently, and delivering ETAs that actually matched real-world driving. It wasn't just a technical improvement, it changed how much I trusted the system. Trust matters when you're planning longer trips or relying on your vehicle to manage charging stops intelligently. Assisted driving improvements were another area where the difference between early 2025 and now is hard to ignore. The adaptive cruise control and lane-keeping behavior used to feel cautious to the point of being awkward. Sudden braking when approaching slower traffic and slightly unpredictable responses made it clear the system was still learning how to behave naturally among human drivers. Over time, though, that behavior became smoother and more confident. The car stopped reacting as if every scenario was worst case and instead started prioritizing real-world driving conditions. One of the most noticeable additions was the introduction of selectable driving styles, ranging from mild to medium to spicy. These settings don't just change aesthetics or labels, they genuinely alter how assertive lane changes are and how the vehicle manages following distances. It's a subtle but meaningful way of letting drivers tailor the system to their comfort level, and it's the kind of feature you simply don't get without ongoing over-the-air updates. All of those day-to-day -day improvements set the stage for what Rivian officially laid out during its recent autonomy and AI-focused announcements. What stood out most wasn't just any single feature, but the direction they're clearly committing to. One of the biggest shifts was the rollout of universal hands-free assisted driving for newer vehicles. This wasn't just an incremental expansion, it dramatically increased where and how assisted driving can be used, no longer limiting it to tightly pre-mapped highways. As long as lane lines are visible, the system is designed to function, which opens up millions of additional miles of additional coverage across North America. That alone addresses one of the most common frustrations many drivers had throughout 2025, where advanced features felt artificially constrained. 
Alongside that came the introduction of a new subscription model centered on autonomy features. Whether you look at it as an upfront cost or a monthly expense, it sends a clear message about Rivian's long-term strategy. Software is no longer just a supporting feature for the vehicle. It's becoming a recurring value stream and a core part of the ownership experience. More importantly, it signals that autonomy features won't be static. They're meant to grow over time, evolving through updates rather than arriving all at once in some dramatic unlock. That gradual evolution is realistic, and it sets expectations in a way that feels more honest than promising instant full autonomy. Looking ahead to 2026, one of the most anticipated additions is the in-vehicle AI assistant. This isn't positioned as a simple voice command system that just responds to scripted phrases. Instead, it's being framed as a context-aware assistant that understands your schedule, your preferences, and the current state of your vehicle. The idea is that it can interact with calendars, manage vehicle functions intelligently, and even assist with diagnostics in a more proactive way. If it works as intended, it represents a meaningful step beyond traditional voice controls and into something that actually feels helpful rather than gimmicky. Of course, the real test will be how it performs in everyday use, but the ambition alone shows how serious the software push has become. Underpinning all of this is a deeper architectural change in how Rivian is approaching data and intelligence across its ecosystem. The concept of a unified intelligence platform that connects cloud systems, vehicle hardware, service data, and customer-facing features suggests a future where the car isn't just reacting to inputs, but anticipating needs. Predictive maintenance, smarter diagnostics, and more personalized experiences all become possible when the vehicle understands patterns rather than just commands. For anyone who enjoys seeing technology mature in thoughtful ways, this kind of foundation building is far more exciting than flashy one-off features. At the same time, it's important to stay grounded. Hands-free driving as it exists today still has clear limitations. It doesn't manage stop signs or traffic signals, and it requires driver attention at all times. This is still a level two system, not a leap into full autonomy. The autonomy features being offered are designed to expand gradually, not flip a switch overnight. That measured approach may feel slow to some, especially with other systems setting aggressive benchmarks. But it's also a reminder that real-world autonomy is complex and requires careful rollout. What makes this entire journey compelling is how much has already changed in a relatively short time. From early interface frustrations and conservative assisted driving behavior to a system that now feels confident, responsive, and clearly future-focused, the evolution is tangible. Rivian isn't just talking about where it wants to go, it's actively building and deploying the pieces needed to get there. For owners and drivers who pay attention to updates, the difference between then and now is impossible to ignore. As 2026 unfolds, the real story will be how these systems mature in the real world, how reliable hands-free driving becomes across different environments, how useful the AI assistant feels in daily life, and how autonomy features expand without over-promising. This isn't about hype anymore, it's about execution, and based on the trajectory so far, it's hard not to be cautiously optimistic about where Rivian's software ecosystem is headed next.